beginning, and the reason I told you this so much about my background is that you're going to know I'm not going to start right up there at fifth grade. So many times you have to amen me on this if you're a first grade teacher. You'll go to an ICTM workshop and it'll say it was for K-5 and everything they talk about is 4-5. And then they say to the, the K and first grade teachers, now I know you can bring this down to your level, you know. And of course they can because early childhood educators can. But now I'm going to say we're going to start down here. And fifth grade teachers, I know you can take this up to your level. We're going to start... The reason that the uh, empty number line is not used as much in this country is we don't know how to start with it. We pull it out as if, you know, it's in the closet. We pull it out and the kids say, oh, that didn't work, and we throw it away. So I'm going to show you today how to make use of that empty number line in an optimal way. First, I'm going to tell you what they are, show you some examples, talk to you about the benefits based on research of using open number lines with children, and what you need to consider when you are using these so that you can get the optimal effect from using them. And then how can you assess that effectiveness? Because that's a very important question. So what is a number line? You know, we, we've seen this kind of number line. It's a, it's a visual representation of numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. It means it extends indefinitely in two directions. So we kind of focused in now, and I want to show you some examples of number lines. Now, if you're a fifth grade teacher or a high school to middle school teacher, you probably haven't seen this first one. But if you're a kindergarten or first grade or second grade teacher, you've probably seen something like this. And I'm going to start right off the bat by telling you, no, no. This first example is very poor and should not be used in the classroom. Anything that represents number with color or pictures is distracting. And as you know from my background, my focus is helping that 25% of the children in your classroom who are at risk of failure. In first grade, I can pretty well tell you they're not going to pass algebra. So anything you're doing that might hurt them, I'm going to say get out of your classroom. Might not hurt your smart kids. This is hurting because it's giving the false impression of number. It has also anything that has to do with pattern on a number line needs to come off. And quite often when you see purchased number lines, oh, the every other number is a blue and then there's a red and there's a blue and there's a red, or maybe the 10 is uh, colored in red, and, you know, uh, children grow up in this situation, it's called the Disney-fied number line, where they think the number line starts with school buses, goes to 30, and then picks up at the pumpkins, and then, you know, get that stuff off. We're talking about a pure number line. And we start with what is called a number track. That's where you start in kindergarten, where the teacher actually constructs this. Question? No, I want you to stop me at any point. So when you're saying take that out, you mean strictly for number lines. Like other visual representations of numbers is not what you mean. Uh, H1 I'm going to address separately. There are some, there are sort of quite a few Visual, num uh, visual representations that are produced by companies that know something about you, and I'm going to talk to the primary teachers right now, and I'll probably encompass a few of the elementary teachers as I say this. They know that you have a cutesy poo gene. <laughs> they know it's embedded. And so they make the cutest stuff you ever saw knowing you're going to buy it. So you need to watch every single thing that is produced in mathematics and say, is this an accurate representation of the number system? And we're going to come in just a few seconds to the most overused, wrong representation of the number system, and that is the 100 chart. And we're going to talk about that and all the dan danger of using a 100 chart with children. But right now, I would say that top one, never, never. Okay, 
So I'm going to show you a good example of a kindergarten one, but the first one there quite often is constructed by a teacher putting a, a one card up one day and a two card the next day and a three card. That is a nice introduction to a number line. That kindergarten teacher is building the idea of a number line. The children are constructing the number line with the teacher. However, something we quite often find out is that you see the same thing in first grade. The teacher's doing the same thing in first grade. The teacher's doing the same thing in second grade. I want to tell you what the children are thinking. Oh, just slit my wrists and be done with it. This is boring. You have constructed a number line in kindergarten. By first grade, this is where you need to be. This needs to be up when they walk in the classroom, you know. And I personally recommend no negative numbers at this point until some child in your classroom asks you about them, and then you add them not before, because, and I promise you that will happen sometime during the year. Uh, and then here comes another number line. This time we don't put every number on it, we just put them in increments of 10. This is a very nice transition. This is, now we're coming into transition lines. This is called the dotted number line, where you put a spot but you put no numbers, no numbers at all. This is an empty number line, but we have dots. Then we have lines. Then we have nothing. This fifth and sixth grade teachers, this is what we want you working with. And we want you working there before fifth or sixth grade. But if the children don't understand, starting at that first one, not the one with apples, this is not going to make any sense. So there is a progression that you need to see what do your children understand about number lines. Now, the most important thing you can do for a child, number one, I'm going to get really dramatic now, the number one most important thing any teacher can do, and we're going to give this job to the kindergarten teacher because she is the most important teacher, sorry, she is, teach them to count. And I'm not talking about counting objects. I'm talking about counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just like you teach a parrot to do. That is the number one math skill. Bet you didn't know that. Number one math skill. The higher a child counts when they put their foot into kindergarten, the better they're going to do in math, and that is researched over and over and over. So our job is to, now what in the world does that have to do with anything? It's a rote skill. Wait a minute, Angela. It has nothing to do with the children knowing the words. Here's the skill. When they do that, they are building a mental number line in their heads. And they are carrying that with them. And that's really what separates the sheep from the dogs in mathematics. Who's got the most complete number line? If your number line includes fractions, you are smarter than a child who said to me last week when I asked her could she put one half on a number line, she said no because it's not a number. She's been studying fractions since kindergarten and she still thought that that was not a number. So she's got an incomplete number line. So a child who's got a number line going forward, smarter than a child who doesn't. The further it goes, the better they are. The more they can jump on at any point. Oh, start at seven and count forward. And if you've not taught kindergarten, you know kindergarten children can't, can't do that quite often. They have to start at one. The child who can jump on a number line and count forward or backward. And with whole numbers, and then in increments of 10, increments of one and 10, 56, 66, 76, 86, if they've got a number line like that, mathematically powerful. That's why we want to use the empty number line.